If there is a transaction between a listed entity uh, and any of its subsidiaries on the one hand uh, and any other person or entity on another, if the effect is that a related party is benefiting from it, it will qualify as a related party transaction and will require audit committee approval. Uh, Mr. Vasani, again, help me with the scope uh, of this proposal and also will it address the complex structures problem uh, where the ownership of a related party is kept opaque? Uh, well, I would treat this new provision which is inter introduced, which is the intent provision, is more like GAR under Income Tax Act. It will try, it, it, the attempt is made here to capture even transactions with entities which lo normally would not uh, come under the regulatory scrutiny because of the OPEC structures. So this exactly is the issue that so long as the objective is to benefit the related party of the listed entity, they would like to capture this transaction. Now, you know, my dilemma is that uh, this responsibility is on the audit committee to find out whether any such transaction which is uh, normally would not fall within the parameters of Regulation 23, but because of the this clause which says that ultimate intent is to benefit the rela uh, related party of the listed entity, uh, they will have to make a determination uh, whether what is the is this transaction eventually going to benefit and it's a very complex analysis perhaps they may have to take the help of external experts to understand who is the real beneficiary of this transaction which is being undertaken uh, Uma, how difficult will it be to gauge this beneficial effect uh, the burden of which uh, as mr vasani pointed out will lie on the audit committee now um, if this proposal is accepted because there is no materiality threshold here if it qualifies uh, or rather if it meets the meets the bar of uh, that this is going to benefit a related party it becomes an rpt as Mr. Vasani said, it doesn't come within the scope of the main uh, prohibition. So if you actually enter into a, if the company or subsidiary enters into a transaction with a third party, uh, which indirectly then benefits the related party, then that will come uh, into the picture. So ultimately, the whole question is going to be, who decides whether this transaction was intended to benefit uh, the related party. Uh, at the outset, it's going to be the audit committee uh, that will have to take a call on that. Uh, and ultimately, I think the difficulty here is going to be that this is a very subjective uh, criterion, uh, which is uh, determined on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis, uh, which is situation-specific and fact-specific. So if the audit committee takes a call which the regulator does not agree, then uh, we're going to see probably litigation uh, surrounding that. And Uma, what happens if, uh, let's say, the audit committee is divided uh, on whether a transaction uh, really benefits a related party or not? Uh, I mean, uh, does that conversation um, come out in any fashion? Or if most or the majority members in the audit committee say that, uh, no, it doesn't benefit a related party and only the listed entity, um, then that decision prevails. So uh, in a typical uh, scenario from a governance perspective, uh, of course, the majority uh, decision would prevail. Uh, but uh, the working group uh, recommendation go one step further. And that's where I think things it might make it a lot more difficult for uh, audit committees, because uh, not only does uh, the, the recommendation require the audit committee's decision to be communicated to the shareholders, but it's also necessary to tell the shareholders whether the decision was unanimous or by majority. So the inner workings of the audit committee may have to be revealed uh, to the shareholders as well uh, under this new proposal. So this question of who d determines uh, whether it was for the benefit uh, of the related party or not cannot be done within the confines of the audit committee. It has to be done in a manner by which uh, it, uh, the, it uh, has to be communicated to the shareholders as well. So it introduces a great deal of transparency at, on the one hand, but again, uh, it, it makes the audit committee's burden that much more difficult.